Have you ever wanted to create sharp shadows for both day and night without having to use shaders or high subdivisions in your mesh? Then you have come to the right video. On this video, I'll go through a few methods of creating vertex pre-lights that look like it's done with light maps and shadow maps, but are really just per vertex colors like your normal vertex pre-lights. Before you get your hopes too high, I want to mention that these methods are not perfect and can take up some time to work with. The idea with these methods is you'll be visualizing lighting and shadows in viewport, and then you will trace over the lighting and shadows using geometry. This geometry will then be cut into your model, and then you can assign the effects to just the resulting geometry. This may sound similar to radiosity and its adaptive subdivision, but the difference is Radiosity's adaptive subdivision adds a large amount of useless polygons, whereas with this method we can define exactly how many polygons we want. Before I begin showing the methods, I want to talk about a few problems. When using daylight system for outdoor daylighting, you need to configure your viewport in a way that slows down your viewport performance, but this is mandatory when cutting the shadows into the mesh. When cutting new edges into geometry, you don't really have a lot of tools to pick from. The cut tool from within editable poly is not always precise, and especially with messy geometry, it can sometimes be hard to cut the geometry you are wanting to cut. The Boolean modifier requires the cutter mesh to align to or intersect the model's own edges if the cutter mesh is planar. It cannot arbitrarily cut into any mesh if the cutter mesh doesn't have any thickness. The sweep modifier can be very useful for cutting mesh using booleans, but it requires the spline to be planar for best results. With these limitations in mind, let's get started. If you're on version 2021 or above, for GTA materials to work, set to max legacy and restart 3DS Max. I will start by importing a residential house from the county side area. You can use whatever model you want, as most of the techniques shown in this video will work fine for any kind of model. For the lighting, I will use a daylight system, but you are welcome to use whichever light type you prefer. The settings for the daylight system doesn't really matter, but you do need to set the sunlight as IES, because it has no clipping issues with shadow, thus making it easier to work with for shadows cast from the sky. You are welcome to position the light in whatever way you like, but as I want to show some solutions to some errors that I found while testing this guide, I'll position the light with the positions I used while testing. For this first example, let's cut out the shadow being cast by the garage. For this kind of cutout, we have two options. Do we want hard shadows without any falloff? Then the cut tool, found inside editable poly, may be the easiest option. Do we want hard shadows with falloff at the edges? Then we could also use the cut tool, but we would need to do this two times in a precise manner, which is not easy. Therefore, whenever we want shadows with falloff, it's easiest to use splines and booleans. I'll start by snapping a shape tool to the garage corner because that is where the shadow roughly starts. I'll let go of snap with S and continue tracing over the shadow. If your model is not flat on Z, you may want to use snap set as face. Now that we have traced over the shadows, Let's turn off shadows in viewport to get better viewport performance. One of the shape knot points was created above zero in Z, and so I'll clear its Z value to prevent skewing issues later. We will be using this spline for the cutting object. Now we need to turn it to polygons and create the falloff shape, which will be a duplicate of this shape but protruding forwards, which we can achieve with the shell modifier. The key here is to do everything procedurally, meaning we can change the cut placement using our spline control points at any time, we can change the height of the cutter object using extrude modifier, and how much falloff we want using the shell modifier. Now 
at last. We just need to make sure that the cutter object intersects with our model's edges, because when the cutter object has open edges, then it cannot cut into faces where no edges exist. If the cutter mesh isn't already intersecting with the geometry, it can be a good idea to move it down just a bit. The cutting method we'll be using is subtraction with the imprint toggle. This cuts edges into the mesh using our cutter mesh as guide for where to place the cuts. As explained earlier, the cutter mesh needs to intersect the model's own edges or it can't cut. Now that the shadow is cut out, we need to separate the hard shadow shape from the falloff shape. That is because if we just added the falloff to the vertices, then it would add the falloff on both sides of the shadow, but we only want it on the outer side. My preferred way is to just detach to a separate object. However, you can also simply split the edges or break the vertices. What matters is that you can add pervertex colors to each face without affecting adjacent faces. For this hard shadow, we just need to add a flat color. I'll make it a strong dark blue color and change the layer opacity to get the result I'm after. You can also change layer blend mode if needed. Now that the hard shadow mesh is detached from the model, we can safely add the fall off, which will only apply to one side and won't be affecting our hard shadows. If you are getting an odd fall off, then it may be due to the fact that the original model is already triangulated. These errors are most obvious when layer opacity is 100%. You can try fixing it by retriangulating your mesh. But, as you can see, the GTA mesh has triangulation burnt into the mesh, and so we need to remove some of those triangles by pressing Keytrail Backspace. If you want to also add shadows to the lower wall and the garage itself, then you can do that by using the cut tool or creating the spline in another viewport such as the front or left viewport and utilizing the auto grid feature on spline creation. This concludes this method. For the next method, we won't be using booleans, but instead just the regular cut tool. This method is best suited for when you want hard shadows without falloff, because creating falloff would require you to cut two times into the mesh, which can be tedious. Start by enabling shadows in viewport. Use the cut tool and trace over the shadows you are seeing. If the shadows disappear, Try increasing your lighting quality at the expense VE of a slower viewport. Begin tracing over the shadow by left, clicking each time to place a new cut. The cut tool can have precision errors at times, which can be resolved by orbiting camera a bit. Press right click if you need to exit out of cutting mode, and then left click to resume cutting.
When done tracing over the shadow, we can turn off shadows in viewport for better performance. We can now begin selecting the polygons of the hard shadow. I will use the brush selection mode and enable the occluded selection mode. That way the brush only selects polygons that we can see. We can now add the shadow color to the face selection. For the last method, we will be using splines and booleans, similarly to the first method. This method is ideal for models made of quads and n-gons, meaning polygons with four or more sides, and models that are mostly planar. For this example, let's cut hard shadows with falloff. Start by creating a ground plane and a box, and imagine this box is an apartment building. I'll begin tracing over the shadows with a spline, and then modify it to create the boolean cutting shape. Now, create a copy of the shape. One will be used as cutter object, and the other will be used for assigning the shadow color to the ground. Prepare the remaining shape for projecting shadows onto the ground. Now that we have the shape ready, we can project its vertex colors onto the ground. If you are new to the projection modifier, it can take a few attempts for the projection to get good results. To make it easier to view the result, it can help to create an instance of the ground as well as the box. 
That way we can still see the projector shape if we need to adjust its cage or other settings. Otherwise, you can simply hide the object in viewport. This concludes the three methods taught in this video.